been included in the annual report. So I'm not going to stick with that. I'm going to go a little bit off her, off her delay. Um, Firstly, I want to say thanks to a lot of people. To, to all the members of the board who have given an enormous amount of, of their own time and energy uh, to uh, support the work of Burnett and, as you all know, it's completely free and voluntary. Uh, but they do take their, uh, their duties as directors very seriously. Uh, particular thanks to John Dowling who uh, retired from the board this last year at Christmas time, I think. John and I joined the board around about the same time, close to 16 years ago. It was a very different Burnett in those days. Um, the biggest issue we had on our plate was whether we would ever, ever survive. Uh, but survive we did. And uh, shortly after that we moved over to this part of the world from Fairfield. Um, and also, unfortunately, during this year, it's not, not in, in the minutes from last, last year, but uh, Mary Waldron, who's been a, uh, a great stalwart on our Audit and Risk Committee, um, has a senior global responsibility with PricewaterhouseCoopers and she has had to uh, relinquish her position on the board and retire on the board. Uh, she didn't want to do it, but I think the numbers of uh, audit and risk committee meetings we had where she was on a telephone from New York or Chicago or Kazakhstan or somewhere like that, it finally just got to be too much for her. She retired and leaves a big hole which we're working to fill at the moment. To the staff, led by Brenda, uh, he's just had two weeks at Columbia University doing a strategic leadership, uh, first, first uh, part of a strategic leadership program and working very much on the strategic planning for uh, the future of Burnett. And I'll touch more on that later on. To all the members of our research teams in the labs, to the international health people, the pop health teams, all those in publicity and fundraising, those in the back of house areas that no one hears too much about, the unsung heroes in, uh, in um, accounting and finance, uh, HR, facility management and those things. Everyone here works really hard and I thank you very much for everything that uh, you have done for the Institute over the last few years. To our auditors KPMG, Alison has been very diligent in prosecuting the audit role and uh, has uh, really helped make sure that we keep this place very much on the, on the financial straight and narrow and we come out with clean un un unqualified audit reports every year. And to a number of patrons, we, this year we have four new patrons. Uh, Maria Myers and Natasha Stott-Despoyer, having um, retired from the board due to other responsibilities, have both become patrons of the Institute. And uh, because of the work we are doing in, in PNG, you know all about our Healthy Mothers, Healthy program, Babies program, Dame Carol Kiddo, who spoke, I think, at Women's Day this year, and Sir Costas Constantino have become patrons. And uh, there's no doubt that without their involvement, the raising of the money for Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies just, babies just probably never would have happened. And we were in Brisbane, what, uh, three weeks ago, I think, at a, at a function where they spoke together with another one of our uh, patrons, Dame Quentin Bryce, and uh, it was a, a wonderful evening for, for fundraising and getting people together who are great supporters of, of Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. This is the, the year when we lost Alistair. Um, a lot of you were present at, at the uh, the memorial service we held for him at the edge and heard a lot of great tributes, but there's no doubt that without his leadership we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, the legacy of the ACS2 building, I, I was involved in, in that with Alistair, right? I think about two or three aborted attempts to get it going uh, and through all the, all the issues we went through in uh, uh, getting the, the concept approved, uh, getting the funding in place and all that sort of thing. Without Alistair's drive and initiative, it never would have happened. He also was critical in getting the whole concept of a medical research future fund off the ground. And one of the great, great tra tragedies of life was that the, the day they held the launch of the, uh, the movement, the, uh, the Future Fund Action Group, was the day after he'd been diagnosed with his brain tumour. And uh, it was a very sad time for everybody. And he left behind a very strong governance framework for us all to work with in this institute. I've been on two overseas trips, and you've probably all had a chance to read the, the articles I've written in Impact. Um, I've been there with Brendan, with Paul, with Maria Myers, and with uh, Elizabeth Chappelle. Uh, to both, to uh, Elizabeth came on both of those. And they were wonderful experiences. Um, in PNG, we looked at the Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies, and the Malaria Program. 
in malaria, absolutely astounded by the degree of engagement that we have, have been able to achieve with the, uh, the elders in the local communities, the ward members and the extent of engagement and involvement of them in prosecuting this uh, program for, for the diagnosis and treatment of malaria. Um, it is improving the lives of the local population and because it is identifying whether people have got malaria or just a fever, it is uh, becoming much more cost effective in the way the treatment is delivered. Healthy mothers, healthy babies, again an enormous amount of engagement with the local community, uh, those who, who are able to help and those who are working there. And a key, for, key facet of that is the extent of training that the people who are working for us are getting in, in modern ways of doing things. And to go there and, and uh, you end up with, with sort of images and uh, there was one place we were at, was a, uh, we went to see a young mother, I think she was probably about 23 or 24 with her fifth baby and uh, sitting out uh, under the, uh, the thatched roof of her house with our people there weighing the baby, measuring the baby and taking all the, all the, the samples and all that sort of thing. Fantastic work and of course James has uh, been the, one of the core people in, in, in all of that, thank you. But it's helping women which is most important in these, these societies. If we can help the women we go a long way to making, making the societies better places. Then I went to um, Myanmar in, uh, was it March I think it was, yeah. Uh, again, a very different place from PNG. We went into, into South Dagon, which is um, a shanty town on the, the, the edge of, of uh, Yangon. You know, Yangon, seven million people growing at a million, million a year, so all these facilities are strained. But seeing the way that our people there are working with the women mainly, and some men, who are volunteers who have set about trying to improve all the way that uh, women deal with, with uh, pregnancy and their uh, uh, neonatal, perinatal and antenatal um, times. It's just, just fantastic. But then you go to see them and they've set up a, um, a birthing centre. Uh, they call it the labour room, the birthing centre, where the women go. The hospital has 300,000 uh, well, 300, people and it's probably the sort of hospital you might find in, in Wilcannia or somewhere like that. It's, uh, it's not uh, anything that, that you would write home about. And they can only treat complicated cases. So all these, these births take place in this birthing centre. They raise the money for it themselves by bottling soap, uh, liquid soaps and, and selling it under their own, own label. Uh, they had a block toilet outside with uh, sewage and everything virtually lapping at the door and they didn't have the money to fix it. So that was a, a real one and they have a, a team of people there from the Red Cross working with as well. In Bagan, diff, very different place, ancient capital of uh, part of what is now Myanmar, uh, city of about, what is it, 1,200 pagodas I think, or, or castles. Uh, going to become one of the great tourist destinations but at this stage still in a very, very, very poor condition. And our people there working on water and, and uh, sanitation and, and basic hygiene. Working with the, the monastic schools, to, uh, helping on sexual and reproductive health, menstrual health and, and things like that that, that our people, uh, we, we take for granted. But in these places they just don't have the facilities or the education. We went to one school, I think uh, this is after we, we got bogged in the sand trying to get there, wasn't it, Fred? And, um, it, school of 82 kids, one monk leading it, three teachers, all of whom had got to about year 10 standard at the school and then become teachers. No running water in that place. The women, the teachers and others there had to carry water in demijohns on their heads about a kilometre to get it there uh, and all it needed was a, a well and a pump and get the water and they, they couldn't raise, raise the money for that. Those sorts of things are just incredible. And then I went, we went to a Yangon, to a drop-in centre for uh, people with, with drug dependency problems. And they have a wonderful system of uh, uh, having volunteers who are uh, from the community who go out and recruit people to come in. And that's where we screen them for uh, uh, HIV, uh, hepatitis B and C and syphilis and we have needle exchange programs and issue of condoms. Condoms are very important to stop some of those diseases spilling out into the community beyond 
the, the drug addicted people. All of that was absolutely wonderful experience for me and it gave me big insights into what I already knew about Burnett, about how we operate, about the work of our lab researchers who are always looking for breakthroughs, treating some of the most intractable problems. You know, we're now working, you know, the work we're doing with, with TB, drug resistant stuff and all that sort of thing, that's fantastic. The pop health teams, dealing with the poor and disadvantaged people in our society, and there are plenty of them out there. We work no more about how Burnett impacts its customers' lives and customers are the people we are looking for and improve my understanding of our key issues going forward as we move into this next phase of our strategic planning. And it gave me to see firsthand the core DNA of Burnett, the stuff that's under our fingernails, is the need to benefit those who live in poor and marginalised communities no matter where they are. Turning now to the, uh, the future. It's fair to say there's a fair few headwinds out there against us. Uh, reduction in government infrastructure funding seems to uh, keep going no matter what. The MRFF is not a panacea for the problems of this uh, sector. There are cuts in aid budgets, not just in Australia, but in a lot of other countries too. And the, the multilateral clients are being more focused and demanding more for less. And we have in Australia and in most of the Western world political and economic uncertainty for in Australia and in a lot of our client countries. And unfortunately, the performance of the stock markets and that sort of thing is not such as to encourage our donors to shell out big time in the lead up to June 30th. So we've now got in place a strategic review for the next five years. And it, as I said, it coincides with the, the time that Brendan is spending at Columbia. We started the review with an amazing piece of work carried out by our board member Helen Evans, together with Jonathan Karapotis from the um, Telephone Kids Institute, director of Telephone Kids in, uh, in Perth, and Steve Booksbaum, who heads up the Global Challenges uh, part of the Gates Foundation. And I think it's a great tribute to the way Burnett is viewed by peer organisations throughout the world that these people were only too willing to come and participate. It was one of the best reports of its kind I have ever seen in 45, 50 years in business. Uh, they nailed it absolutely and uh, a lot of the credit goes to, to, to Helen for that and, and all the work that other people in the Institute put into it. They conducted 40 interviews with staff, with governments, with the multilaterals, with other MRIs and with board members. They gave us some strong recommendations on the way forward, building from what we already have as a very strong base. We, have over 30, we had over 30 staff involved. We had uh, four groups working from within the staff, looking at important issues from, from the staff point of view, looking to the future. We have separate reviews on fundraising, and commercialisation in underway at the moment. Uh, fundraising has been uh, chaired by Gary Hounsell, our board member, and the, um, the commercialisation by another board member, Ben Foster. Brendan's been to Columbia. We've got strategy workshops that border on, on duty tomorrow morning at 8.30 8 or something like that. Uh, and then on the uh, May 30th, 31st, we have, have a uh, two-day strategy session that involves board, executive and, and a number of staff members. Out of that will come a series of detailed action plans that will be uh, developed over the next little while and then um, we will be able to, uh, to um, continue uh, on with the program. From the work we've done so far, we know we're on the right track, but we have to make some changes so we can have a greater impact. Now, Burnett has a strong track history of change. As I said, when John and I joined the board, we are out of Fairfield. We moved here. We went through a merger with the Austin. We built ACS2. We changed a lot of the way, the way we do things. We changed the structure. We had seven, I think, different uh, units, now down to three. And we're looking forward to see what else we need to do so that we increase the way we impact on our community. All of those were board-led and adopted by the wider Burnett community. We'll be making changes, but they are not change for, for change's sake. 
We're going to be changing to make us more effective. In other words, making sure that we do all the right things. We're going to change to make us more efficient, make sure we, th we do things the right way, the best possible way. We're going to be changing to improve job security and job satisfaction for our people. We're going to be changing to open up career paths, to bring greater diversity, both gender and, and ethnic diversity and uh, experience. And above all, we will be changing to make sure we bring greater impact to those who benefit from our work those who live in poor, marginalised and neglected communities, no matter where. We have not been standing still. A lot of these things have been known to us for a while. We've already increased the resourcing for our fundraising programs, and that's shown a great benefit already. We've put in place during the last year new commercial initiatives aimed at developing a revenue stream that is not dependent on government. We've got 360 Biolabs uh, operating now, which has uh, taken over on the, from the great work that was done in establishing the uh, immunomonitoring facility. Uh, and that now is, uh, David, you can probably give us, we've got a lot, a lot, of, lot of interest from uh, uh, people outside wanting to do clinical trials and using our facilities, which is the only GLP registered facility in the Southern Hemisphere. Is that right, Dave? That's correct, yeah. Um, and during this last year, we got BioPoint uh, going in Hong Kong, the Nanjing operation, based in Hong Kong, with the Nanjing operation as a uh, place to, to uh, further develop the diagnostics that we've uh, been generated in, in the Anderson and uh, laboratory. And we did all that without Burnett putting money into it. We've got it funded by getting investors from, from China, uh, and that's an ongoing going issue. So we're using our intellectual property as capital to put into something to attract investors to enable us to con continue the long process of development. A core objective of our strategy is to be in a position where we do not have to rely on government infrastructure funding. If we get it, then we will continue to prosecute the case hard, but in a few years' time we hope that that, that will be almost like a bonus for us instead of being a, a one of the fundamentals of life in, in the uh, medical research field at the moment. I look forward to working with Brendan, his executive and all the staff, plus the board, to ensure that Burnett is on a sound footing with a strong upward tra trajectory for future success in fulfilling its mission. Thank you very much.